on JH Medium here today, we are in Bali, Indonesia. Our first stop is the cultural center of Bali, Ubud. Before enjoying the beautiful beaches of Bali, we are in the central part of the island to explore its lush rice fields, go on some relaxing hikes, try local delicacies, and of course, immerse ourselves in the Balinese Hindu culture. Ubud is completely different from what I imagined Bali to be like. For this trip, we decided not to stay in the center of Ubud. Instead, we're staying one kilometer further south in this very peaceful street. Immediately, I can feel the spiritual nature of this island. The first thing that catches my eye are these grand gates in front of every house. The design actually makes every house look like a mini temple. Many compounds have a Ganesha statue in front of it. Ganesha, the remover of obstacles, is believed to protect the household and prevent bad spirits from entering. In front of every household, there are also these little flower baskets, Janang Sari. They are a daily offering made to the gods to maintain the balance within the world. You can see these little baskets everywhere, on the ground, on statues, or just lying on the sidewalk. Aside from the unique visuals of the village, there's also the soundscape of roosters crowing, dogs barking, and children laughing. Walking through this street feels calming, and now I can definitely understand why people come to Bali for a getaway. But as we walk out to the center of Ubud, all this changed. We have made it over to the downtown area of Ubud, and our first stop today is the Ubud Palace. Did you know that Indonesia actually has the highest population of Muslims in the world? While over 80% of the country is Muslim, the predominant religion here is Hinduism. Ubud Palace is a center and symbol of Balinese Hinduism. While the size of the compound is quite small, I can still spend a long time observing and appreciating the details in the architecture. I like how the buildings are at one with nature. The green plants surrounding the buildings, the little pink flower on all of the statues, and although probably unintentional, even the moss gives the boring concrete grey a hint of colour. After this quick tour of Ubud Palace, we're going to head to Gautama Street for lunch. I think this restaurant is located inside a compound of a guest house. We'll have one pork nasi camper, one ayam goreng, and one young coconut. Thank you. The food is here, and there's really one word to describe it. It's a feast. Look at this, we got a nasi champur, which is the Indonesian mixed rice. There's so many different little side dishes to it. Honestly, I don't even know what all of them are, but there's like one, two, three, four, five, six dishes and two sauces. One of them is the sambal, and there's another probably a chili paste. And this one is the ayam goreng, which is the fried chicken. Two little side dishes, some sambal, salad. I just love this plating, it's so elegant. Even though the portion size doesn't seem that big, I think this whole meal, it's a good balance of ingredients, probably a good balance of nutrients as well. So excited to try. They didn't give us a knife. I don't know how I'm going to cut this, so I guess I'm just going to bite into it like this. The ayam goreng fried chicken is super, super crispy, but it's not like a battered fried chicken. I think it's just the skin fried, so the skin is thin, but when you bite into it, you still get that really nice crunch. These two plates are absolutely delicious. It's going to take too long to talk about every single side dish, but some of my favorites are this pork satay, perfectly cooked as well. The roasted pork is also really good. Basically the flavor profile, it's like a combination of spiciness, sweetness, and sourness added together to form this perfect plate. So delicious, what a great meal. And it's also cheap, I'll write down the price right here. In the afternoon, it got a little bit more cloudy, and I thought it was a very good time to go have a haircut. 
we found this haircut shop that's inside a bar. I think the haircut looks pretty good, so I get to look fresh for the rest of this Bali trip. After my haircut, we were walking past the Ubud Palace, and then there were lots of people on the street selling these tickets to a fire dance. I know the fire dance is really popular here in Bali, but we don't often buy tickets offline. Usually we try to book everything online. So this is just completely out of the blue. And that guy sounded pretty convincing. Who knows if this show will be good or not. Let's find out soon. We have arrived in a location for the Ketchak dance. I did not expect there to be this many people here. Since everyone is just selling the tickets on the street, I didn't expect them to be able to sell out an entire crowd. It seems like everything is really last minute for this performance, but hopefully this show will be good. Well, the show is over. It was a one hour show. I think overall it was still pretty good. The first 30 minutes were slightly less interesting, but the second half of the show, the last 30 minutes were really good. And I do think it's worth coming to. It's interesting that they just wear the costume and ride the scooter back home. It's another day here in Ubud and it finally stopped raining. We're gonna go for a hike in the afternoon, but before that, we're at another Warun to have a quick lunch. I feel like in every single meal, I just wanna have a coconut because they're so cheap and so delicious here. Lilo这个小院子里面，一下又感受到了巴厘岛很chill的这个氛围，就只要你不在主街上，我觉得在任何这样一个院子里，就迅速的可以进入一个安静的空间里面，就会看到整个院子里面有各种植物围绕着你，
After that delicious meal, it's time to go have some exercise. There are many very easy trekking routes just minutes from the center of Ubud. Today, we're heading to the Champuhan Ridge. The trail actually starts going downhill, and then we probably have to go uphill again, which is quite annoying. The weather seems partly cloudy, so there will be sunlights at intervals, but hopefully not too hot on the entire way. I think we have reached the end of the shade and the rest of it will not be covered. It's going to be on that ridge. To be honest, this trail really isn't even a hike. It's more like a walk in the park along this ridge. You see many people even doing this in sandals. 今天来说呢，就可以看到两边的树丛掩映，然后路的尽头就能看见蓝天白云，一个很适合放松身心的一条徒步路线。We have reached a small gate. I think this is like the entrance to a village. We're gonna walk all the way over there to that cafe. I get why digital nomads from all over the world choose to come here to live and work. Sitting in a little cafe like this, looking out onto the open fields in this perfect weather, as long as you step out of the busy, congested city center, everything else here, the village vibes, the nature, really makes this place feel so relaxing. Now I guess it's time to take the trail back to the Ubud city center. Whether you like trekking, want to work off a heavy meal, or just want some peace and quiet, the Champuhan Ridge Walk is a great way to spend a few hours in Ubud. And definitely take a break at one of the cafes facing the rice fields. You will not regret it. Good morning again from Ubu. One of my favorite things about the guest house we're staying at is that every morning they bring you breakfast straight to your doorstep. It's nothing fancy, we're having coconut pancake with fruits, but it's still a nice touch. Today, we're chartering a car to visit some places further away from the center in the rest of Gyanyar Regency, the area that Ubu is located in. Our first stop today is the Chepeng Waterfall. It's actually quite a long walk away from the parking lot, so maybe wearing slippers is not the best idea. Just like most sites in Bali, you have to pay an entrance fee. The Japan waterfall costs 30,000 per person. The water is so cold. Waterfall is one of the most beautiful in Bali because it pours into a cave. So when the light peeks through the trees above, it makes the whole scene very magical. Everything is completely wet, my glasses, I can barely see, my bag is all wet. 
in hindsight, bringing all these bags was definitely the worst decision. I suggest bringing a very small bag, ideally a waterproof bag if you want to come to this waterfall. And honestly, the hike back up is quite steep and tiring. In the end, I still highly recommend visiting this waterfall. Okay, let's continue today's journey. After a very dizzying car ride, we arrived at our second location of the day. We're at the Pura Tirta Empol. Before you come into the temple, everybody has to wear one of these sarongs. You don't have to rent it, the price is included in the ticket. Pura Tirta Empo is a sacred Hindu water temple. The spring water here is considered one of the holiest water sources in Bali. It's believed to have the power to cleanse your body, mind, and soul. Inside the holy water, the locals perform a unique cleansing ritual known as Maluka, literally meaning purification or cure. The temple attracts people from all over the world to visit, which also means it's one of the most crowded temples too. This place is so packed with people that I don't even feel like doing the cleansing ritual anymore. So instead of participating in the ritual, we're gonna walk around this beautiful temple complex. There are also some similar and smaller temples nearby if you want to visit one with fewer tourists. But for the sake of time, we'll have to skip them on this trip. And now, it's time for lunch. Nearby the temple, there is a very popular vegan waroon. So let's see what the vegan version of some of Bali's most famous dishes tastes like. We got a nasi champur and a mi goreng. The vegan version is actually still pretty good. They replace all the meat with like tofu based products. Now let's head to our next destination. This area of Bali is most famous for its rice terraces. Later in the afternoon, we're gonna visit the popular Tegalalang Rice Terrace. But before that, we're here at a relatively unknown one, the Banjar Manchinan Rice Terrace. There's one single path that cuts through the middle of the rice terrace that you can walk on. Other than the people working on the fields and one or two locals riding by in their motorbikes, there's nobody here. It's less than a five minute drive away from the ultra crowded Pura Tirta Empo. I really wonder why nobody comes here, but I'm not complaining. It's so nice to have an afternoon stroll in a place where there are no tourists at all. It's just us and the nature around us. The steps on the rice terrace here are not as distinct as the other famous ones. So maybe visually speaking, it's not as grand. But unlike many sites in Bali, this one is not really commercialized. There are no stalls selling snacks and souvenirs. There's no entrance fee either. You just give a small donation in this little box. It feels more like a rice terrace in its original form. And I love it here. It's just being in nature. You hear the little water irrigation system here, some birds chirping in the air. This little field really is a hidden gem. Now let's go check out the most famous Tegalalang rice terrace. And we have made it to our final destination of the day. We're here at the Chiking Rice Terrace, more commonly known as the Tegalalang Rice Terrace.
Unlike the previous one, you do have to pay an entrance fee here. We paid 50,000 per person, but I did hear that the price may vary depending on the entrance you enter from, which is very strange. This rice terrace really is quite massive. It seems we have to do a huge loop in order to get to the main entrance. Right now in July, it's probably not the best season to visit the rice terrace. There are barely any crops. From this angle right here, the rice terraces at the back look kind of barren. But season aside, my least favorite part about this rice terrace is definitely all the artificial attractions built here. There are so many swings. I don't know which genius thought it was a good idea. Maybe it makes for a cool Instagram reel, I don't know, but it does ruin the landscape a bit. And the same could be said for that massive swimming pool club over there. I get why they build these things and how it could appeal to some people, but personally, I wish these terraces can stay a bit more natural. You would think that man over there is a farmer, but I think he's more like a paid actor to take photos with. Even though this place is highly, highly commercialized, it feels more like an amusement park rather than a farm. There's still some moments where it's absolutely stunning, especially around 4.30 p.m. when the light directly shines onto the rice terraces. Overall, I still have to say this was not my favorite destination today. If you have never seen a rice terrace before, it's still very cool to visit and trek around. But compared to other rice terraces I visited in Yunnan or Guangxi, China, Tegelalang is far less appealing. The Banjar Manchinan rice terrace we visited earlier today was more of the atmosphere I was looking for in Bali. But regardless, today's road trip around Gyanyar Regency was still very enjoyable, and I highly recommend this route for any first-timers in Bali. After the tiring road trip yesterday, today we're gonna take it easy. We're gonna go eat some good food. And in the afternoon, Rika booked a Balinese music workshop. I won't be attending since I have zero musical talent. That means I can help film and document her experience. But first, let's go have lunch. Today in Ubud, we're gonna try another famous dish in this area, grilled pork ribs. I got mine with nasi goreng and Rika got hers with mi goreng. You can see that barbecue sauce glistening on the pork ribs. Hopefully it's delicious. I'm gonna cut into these ribs. It's really easy to cut through, which means the meat should be super tender. <laughs> it's hard to find a neat way to eat this. I love that smoky barbecue flavor and the meat literally falls off the bone. You barely have to chew the rib. Just look at how easy it is to cut, barely using any force, and the bone already comes clean off. All these single serving pork ribs come with some sort of carb, so let's try my nasi goreng. It's savory, not bad, but not the best either. The star is definitely the pork rib. Now to try the noodles and the ribs. I think the ribs on top are actually the same BBQ ribs, but the noodles look like spicy noodles. That has a kick to it. I like the spiciness, which I think makes a good combination with that slightly sweet barbecue sauce ribs. Overall, a nice meal, classic barbecue ribs with a Balinese twist to it. But one meal is not enough. Of course, we gotta go somewhere for dessert. If you like coconut, you gotta come to Tuki's. I think they have the best coconut ice cream in Ubud. We got ours served on top of this fruit bowl. And we also got a chendol drink. Highly recommend if you like anything coconut related. Now it's time for Rika to go attend her music workshop. Today我是要来参加一个我期待了蛮久的一个活动，就是来学习甘美兰。甘美兰是印尼传统的一种音乐的形式，它应该是一种打击乐，它是一种各种的乐器组合成的一种音乐，所以它统称叫做甘美兰
个小时，说过得快，感觉也挺快。就学了两首曲子，我们其实就是在反复的弹。我第一次尝试这种敲击乐，我就觉得它的共鸣非常的强，而且你敲完一个音呢，它那个余韵会留很久，就是一直回响在你的脑海边。你每弹完一个音，然后弹下一个音的时候，你要抓住上一个那个键，它才不会持续的发出声音。所以我觉得这个是更加考验你反应速度的一个东西。体验还是蛮不错的，就第一次去了解民族音乐。After the workshop, it's nearly nighttime already, so we're just gonna go back to our guest house and enjoy today's sunset on our rooftop. Today is our last full day in Ubud, and we're heading to one more easy trek just minutes away from the central area. But while Ubud and Bali have been mostly spectacular so far, I think it's only fair to point out some negative things I didn't expect. Even though the center of Ubud is not too big, the roads make it very unwalkable. Look at the condition of this sidewalk over here. There are like giant holes in the middle of it that you can easily fall into. It feels like the roads here are only suitable for motorcycles. With Ubud being so congested all the time, you would think it's more convenient to walk around. But in some places, walking even feels kind of dangerous. So I guess we have to resort to hiring a motorcycle as our main form of transportation. With that being said, of course there are still many areas nearby perfect for a stroll. Today we're heading to the Subak Chuuk Manis Rice Fields Walk. Even with a navigation app, it's still quite difficult to find the entrance. So just look out for this sign and head in. Well, this is a very interesting art building. As we enter the rice fields, all the commotion on the streets fade away. It's like two completely different worlds. 其实它的这个景象，我觉得跟任何一个中国或者是亚洲的农村都非常的相似，也会让我想起我小时候很喜欢走在这些田间地头，然后经常一不小心就会掉在水坑里的这种情景。真的会有一点童年的回忆涌现出来。I think when walking through a rice field like this, we can really appreciate the simple joys of traveling. We don't need anything luxurious, extravagant, or even particularly interesting. Sometimes being in a vast open space like this, where your mind can be free of any and all troubles, this is the best feeling in the world. Right now, we're taking a small break at the sweet orange warung. We got some mixed juice. It looks like there's probably some papaya, strawberry inside, and we also got this interesting spring roll-looking dessert. I think it's actually fruit inside. This small warroom cafe is really cute. Up on there, you can see their masks made out of coconuts, and sometimes you can hear this bell sound. It's actually a windmill, so when the wind blows on it, it makes this ringing sound, and it's pretty soothing, I guess. Very honest. Before coming here, Bali never interested me. With all the exposure on social media, it felt overrated and overcrowded. While there's definitely some truth there, I think Ubud has changed my mind. Bali is without a doubt very touristy and busy, but even during peak season now, you can still find your own personal space and a small piece of paradise. And I guess that's what traveling is for, to change our preconceived perception and truly see for ourselves what the destination's culture, people, and atmosphere is really like. So on that note, enough of my opinion. 
Come and discover Ubud for yourself.